right, so now we're going to talk about shape in FSCB. So again, we're just going to do dopamine now. I'll come back to some other compounds in a future time. But this, so I don't want have that. Again, I rate my drawings. Most of them are pretty bad. Um, uh, this is a typical FSCB that we see. So let's talk um, about a few of the features of this um, CV. So the first one we're going to talk about is peak separation. So if I was to look at the anodic um, potential, we usually say it's around minus 0 0.6. That can vary by the electrode a little bit. Um, and then we typically say that the cathodic uh, potential right, is um, about minus 0 0.2. And so we've got 0 0.6 minus minus 0 0.2, right, is about 0 0.8 volts. Or we do that in millivolts, 800 millivolts. And I just, you know, um, a little while ago I told you that it should be 30 if we were looking at a diffusion control thing, right? Delta at 59 over N, where N is equal to 2, and we're at 800. So we're not very close to anything theoretically good for, for, for uh, voltammetry. I also told you that I thought we actually really should compare it to the absorption, and there, delta E peak is zero. Um, and so, delta E peak is very wide. And I just want you, if you do FSCB all day long, and you don't do a lot of like traditional things, maybe it doesn't click how wide this is. But oh, is it wide, right? These peaks are really separated compared to other um, things. And the primary reason here ends up being sluggish electron transfer. Uh, and so, as we come to the electrode, right, we have our dopamine on the electrode, and what happens here is we have some K, some rate constant, right, to transfer the electrons, so I call that ET for electron transfer, uh, there. And it turns out that if you go slowly, this K is faster than, say, the scan rate. And so when I get to a potential, I'm able to transfer the electrons before I'm too far past that potential. But here, when I'm going screaming fast, right, um, you know, on my FSCB waveform, I'm just going to drop one point, one part of it. Um, let's say this is E0 for dopamine, and E0 for dopamine is approximately 0 0.15 volts. Right spot there. I'm probably a little high, but who cares? Um, you know, I'm going to call that 0 0.15 volts, right? And as I go up, so now here it is thermodynamically possible to transfer an electron. The problem is that this, remember, its axis is time. So I could transfer an electron here, but by the time the electron actually gets transferred, I may be more now at this point on the thing, right? There's some given delta T that it takes to do the electron transfer. And by the time I get there now, I'm, you know, the peak ends up looking like it's at 0 0.6. Now notice here that's the main peak. That's not the only, like some of it went earlier, right? Um, you know, and some of it went a little later, you know, kind of thing. Uh, not all the electrons get transferred at once. Um, but there's a time that takes to do that actual electron transfer. And so it appears that you're at a higher voltage. It's not that you needed that higher voltage. If you got here and held, you would do the reaction. But you didn't hold, you kept going at a screaming fast rate. And so that pushes things out. So this is very much where these peaks are. And the peak separation is very much then dependent on the scan rate. Because, let's say it, gives, it takes a given delta T to do this. OK, let's I'm going to test, really test my drawing skills here. Um, uh, you know, if I now pick a different scan rate, um, I'm going to pick a different scan rate and try and go faster. Uh, you know, it turns out if I wanted to pick this same amount of time, see how well I do on picking the same amount of time. It would have helped if I had drawn up like a straight line. Um, Anyways, if I want to pick that same amount of time, now I'm going to end up, oh, that kind of works, at a higher voltage, right? So maybe you just said it took one millisecond, it doesn't, to you know, transfer the electron. That one millisecond before might have been 200 millivolts that I've changed, and now it's 400 millivolts if I've doubled the scan. 
right? And so the peaks shift out, right? If I go to a higher scan rate, I might see my peaks shift out. And sometimes what that does, if I'm only scanning down to minus 0.4 here, is that it means the peak is actually kind of not even being fully done, like I can't see it on there. So peaks shift with scan rate. You know, with a higher scan rate, gives you a higher delta E peak. Um, and that's something, again, if you do that kind of experiment, you need to know. So it's one of the reasons that we don't, I'll talk about optimizing a little bit later, but it's one of the reasons we don't go at screening fast scan rates, is just that all the peaks shift out, it's hard to fit the peaks in then in our kind of given range that we can look at. Um, yeah. All right, I feel like I should be good. Um, so when we wrote a paper about this, the reviewer was like, oh, but there's so many more causes of say, a peak shifting around. And so I feel like I should perhaps give them to you uh, so that you can satisfy our reviewers someday if they ask you about these things. Um, so all of these delta EP is we're dependent on a lot of things. Um, and so we'll write a few of them out. Um, the time constant of your reactions, so that's the R and the C, right, um, uh, that we're looking at. It's dependent on your amplifier. Um, and so uh, we're having a discussion about how, you know, filtering settings or the bandwidth of your amplifier can come into play if it's not properly designed. Uh, that could cause that. Um, it's dependent on your, yeah, your low pass filter. And again, if you get your filtering wrong, um, it'll distort the background and distort your peak drops a little bit. And then if you were really to ask an, a, a good electric chemist, um, um, it would, they would probably have given you the answer of uncompensated ohmic drop, like IR drop, right? Uh, so these are all things it could be. That's what they probably would have wanted it to be. Uh, but we've got an advantage in our experiment. So ohmic drop is IR. Um, and our eyes are still really small. Again, a typical experiment might get microamps or even milliamps of, of current. We get nanoamps. And so we have a small current, we pretty much have a small ohmic drop. And so this small ohmic drop is one of the reasons that we only usually do two electrodes, that we typically ignore it. Now, if we're going really fast, these currents start to get bigger. Maybe you could claim there's some ohmic drop um, issues uh, there. Uh, but this is one of these reasons that we don't worry too much about ohmic drop. But it is something that, in general, in electrochemistry, if you had a lot of IR drop, it would cause your peaks to shift out. The last thing I want to say is if you think about amperometry for a minute, uh, where they just held at a constant potential, one of the things that always amuses me is that most of the amperometry experiments for dopamine at single cells are done at 0 0.6 volts. And I know how they picked 0 0.6. They picked it. Oh, I put a pot. That's terrible. Oh, that's supposed to be positive. I fixed it. Um, uh, so they, they pick it right off of the 0 0.6 right here. That's a stupid way to pick an amperometry potential because the peaks are shifted. So don't go picking your amperometry potentials from fast scan CV. Like, it turns out that you can hold at 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and see the same amperometry results for dopamine. You don't need 0 0.6, right? But if you look at the fast scan, you're like, oh, well, I'll just pick 0 0.6 because that's the peak potential. And you're like, eh, you know, um, you probably should pick it off a of slow scan CV, uh, quite frankly, and not off of uh, fast scan CV. OK, so that's one thing about peak shape, and that is the peaks are very separated. Um, and again, if you knew anything about electric chemistry, that should bother you. Um, peaks are way, way more separated than they should be. Well, let's look at something else for peak shape. All right, so let's also look for peak shape at the fact that the peaks are symmetrical. So let me redraw. My cyclical hamogram. Uh, again, E, I. Um, and so by symmetrical, I'm talking about the fact that they come back down to baseline. 
Remember, a typical diffusion controlled CV looks something like this, where this is baseline and it stays up above baseline, and ours do not. Ours don't stay up, as I said, and so the fact that they go to baseline, again, basically tells us that we're adsorption controlled. So in an adsorption controlled reaction, Basically, the dopamine must stick to the electrode. When the dopamine sticks to the electrode, it then gets oxidized when we're at a potential sufficient to do that. But essentially, this means all of the dopamine that's up to the electrode got oxidized here. All of it. There's no more. We can keep going out. There's no more that on this time field, the experiment is going to be oxidized because we were on this time, the absorption is um, slower. So there's a diagram I kind of like to use for this to kind of talk about rates. So if we're thinking about, again, what happens at our electrode surface, we've got dopamine out here in solution. Uh, and that dopamine is going to diffuse somewhat near the surface. Uh, and so we're going to have some sort of K for diffusion, some sort of rate constant for diffusion. And then that dopamine is going to be absorbed to the surface. I'm going to call this absorbed. Um, and so there's going to be some sort of K here for absorption. And then, as I said, we're going to go back. Oh, that was dumb. Um, we're going to make dopamine orthochronone. Actually, I only want one, 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 one thing here. We're only going one direction at the moment. Uh, we're going to make dopamine orthochronone, right? So that's our K for electron transfer. And that's going to be absorbed. And we can do the same thing here. Now, if, K, if this falls off of the electrode, that's going to be desorbed, and then it too could diffuse. And so we have some sort of K for diffusion. So there's a bunch of Ks, is what we're looking at. But when you set it up like this, you're like, oh, again, in chemistry, we like to talk about kinetics. And you know, if you've done anything in chemistry, it's slow wins, right? The rate limiting step is whatever is slowest. So when we say this is desorption, sorry, when we say this is adsorption controlled, what we're saying is this is the slow step. That it being able to actually absorb onto the surface ends up being the slow step. Um, and so um, adsorption is slower than the rate of diffusion here. And again, we're doing a very fast experiment. Rates could, you know, maybe diffusion could replenish the surface if we were, you know, doing an experiment on the time scale of seconds. But here we're doing a time scale of like 10 milliseconds, maybe even less, and desorption, there's no way diffusion can re kind of uh, bring enough here to, to um, allow it to absorb. So uh, the absorption here is the slow step. Um, there's a concept in voltammetry called stripping voltammetry. And it's very much what we do in fast scan cycle voltammetry, and that is you hold and you allow something to stick to your electrode. And then you do a fast scan, right, where you oxidize what was absorbed. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Um, you know, we, are, we allow dopamine to absorb, right, while we're at this negative holding potential, right, because dopamine's really positively charged. And then, we go up and back and we see what is stuck to the electrode. And so again, over and over in these lectures, I just keep talking about absorption because it's the key concept. It's also the key concept that's not the same as traditional electric chemistry. Most people think of traditional electric chemistry as diffusion controlled, and we just aren't diffusion controlled. Um, and so, um, yeah, so we should be, again, oxidizing everything that's on the surface, and we come back this way, we should be reducing everything that's on the surface. Um, and so absorption, again, comes into a key thing, but the peaks do not stay up. Now, if you ever go to a super high concentration, uh, um, your peak shape will change. So this is for where we are kind of in our like, linear range. If you went to a ridiculously high concentration of uh, dopamine, like 100 micromolar or something like that, then you might start to see kind of things because there's so much out there in solution that is partially diffusion controlled. Uh, so in our labs, sometimes people do a concentration experiment, and they'll, you know, we'll see it's not linear past about 10 micromolar. The shape also changes for those really high ones, uh, and it's something you can see. But peak shape again is something that you really want to look at. Okay, so these are symmetrical. 
I ruined it by drawing another shape on it, so I'm going to redraw it again. Number three in this series on shape, um, I'll leave that. Kind of, I just nicked my um, thing. All right. Um, uh, the thing that that you should realize, though, is that we do not get equal oxidation and reduction currents. So I've been drawing these, I think, pretty well. Um, and when I draw them, this time I'll draw the Uberg set. Go with I versus E. Um, so here we can measure. Again, an anodic potential, we can measure, sorry, current, uh, a cathodic current. And if you were to look at these, the anodic current is always larger than the cathodic current. And you might say, well, that doesn't make any sense for what you just told me in this diagram over here. Because, you know, Dopamine absorbs to the surface, I do electron transfer, dopamine orthoquinone, but if it's absorbed to the surface, I should be able to go back that way, right, and do reduction, right? If it's on the surface, I should go back the other way and do reduction, and it should be perfectly the same current, the amount of dopamine, as it was before. So we have a problem. Again, in a, in a traditional thin layer cell, you would get a signal that looked like this, and again, this anodic current and the cathodic current should be equal. And here they're not. They almost never are. Um, and so the problem here ends up being this. So the equal assumes that when we make this, it doesn't come off the electrode. And that's the bad assumption. Um, it turns out that this K for desorption of dopamine orthoquinone is much larger than the K for adsorption of dopamine. It's about tenfold larger. And so what happens is we do this, we make the dopamine orthoquinone, but before I can get back to detect it again, it likes to fall off the electric. And so, the ratio of these peaks, it really depends, I think, in a flow cell, uh, you know, your I cathodic is often somewhere around 60% of your anodic peak. Um, but it turns out in vivo it's even worse. If you look at like some of like the behavioral data, that cathodic peak is oftentimes in vivo, um, maybe only about 30% of that anodic peak. Um, and so I guess really it's hard, to, it's hard to be reversible. So these are not perfectly reversible. I hate to use the word reversible because it means something that this is, definitely doesn't even have close to the meaning of. But again, you would expect it. If it didn't go anywhere and it didn't fall off, it should be the same. And it's um, and I'll hint at the fact, I'll talk about some of our electric development in uh, next week's lessons. We've fixed this with some of our strategies, right? You know, you're going to design an electrode um, uh, sort of around that. Okay. 